What's up everyone, Super Nerd Daniel here once again. We're fast approaching the release of Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, with so many people speculating whether it'll be a direct sequel, or just a slight alteration on the existing Gen 7 games, similar to Yellow, Crystal, Emerald, or Platinum. Personally, I'm not really expecting much more from Ultra Sumo, except that I don't get completely railroaded through Melee Melee Island. Seriously though, it's been 20 years guys, could we please get an option to skip the Pokemon catching tutorial? Anyway, one of the biggest questions coming from this announcement was whether or not we get any new Alola native Pokemon, or even some new Alolan forms. And recently I was approached by an artist named Adam Drexler, who offered to use some of his artistic skills to bring some of my ideas to life, so today, with Adam's help, I'm going to tell you about 5 Pokemon I think you get in Alolan form in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Number 5. Fanpy and Donphan. There's honestly not much lore or backstory that I could easily come up with as to why I wanted Fampy and Donphan to get Alolan forms. I just think it'd be cool to plop them on the icy peaks of Mount Lanakila for a bit and watch them develop into ice ground types. Did you see what I did there, by the way? When I said it'd be cool for them to become ice types? Ah? Ah? Please laugh at my jokes, it's the only way I can achieve psychological validation. But for real, we did the random ice typing for the Alolan forms of the Sand True and Bulbix lines and those turned out pretty nice. Hell, Alolan Ninetales is easily one of my favorite Pokemon to come out of Gen 7. And those who come to my viewer battle streams on Twitch have seen me make very good use of Aurora Veil to help my sweepers set up with little danger of reprisal. So I can't really see why an Ice Ground variant of the Fampy line couldn't also have some success. Just keep Sturdy as its first ability and swap out its hidden ability Sand Veil for Slush Rush, and I think we've got a real winner on our hands. Number 4! Dwebble and Crustle! Dwebble and Crustle are already based on hermit crabs, basically just swapping out discarded shells for rocks and boulders to call their home. So I figured, in a region composed of several islands that's so completely surrounded by water, Dwebble and Crustle would most likely need to adapt to their new surroundings by acting more akin to traditional hermit crabs, using discarded shells as their protective armor, maybe even taking those shells from other shelled Pokemon like Clam Pearl or Cloyster, make them water and rock types, and I think this would work fairly well. You wouldn't even have to change their abilities. Shell armor, sturdy, and weak armor still go right along with the design in the concept, so it's simply a slight change to the look and typing to better suit them living in such a tropical region. And hell, if Dr. Zoidberg can suddenly find a shell to call a home in the middle of the ocean, I think a Crustle would be just fine. Look at me! I'm Dr. Zoidberg, homeowner! Number 3! Bunnelby and Diggersby! Everyone's had their theories as to what the various empty construction plots on the different islands could possibly be in. While I'm definitely not a fan of the theory that claims they'll eventually become Pokemon gems, just because the lack of gems in favor of island trials is what helps Sun and Moon really stand out from the other games, I'm definitely curious to see what they could become, assuming Ultra Sun and Moon hold the answers. But I'd like to think that, in addition to the much chance we usually spot by these plots, other Pokemon are being used to construct whatever's gonna end up on them. Pokemon like Diggersby, who are commonly used on construction projects due to the power of their large years. I think a sealed ground variant of Bunnelby and Diggersby could be really interesting, as it would allow them to keep their ground typing but swap out their otherwise essentially useless normal typing for something that could actually hit something super effectively. Plus, I feel like a metallic body of some sort could really help Diggersby deal with the tropical heat of the Alola region, especially having to work all day in the hot sun doing manual labor. Honestly, I just hope all the construction Pokemon don't get sick of these ridiculous working conditions and go on strike, otherwise we'll never find out what those stupid empty plots are supposed to be. Number two, Bellossom. Now, in all fairness, this one is kind of combining two previous concepts of other Pokemon from recent generations, but I still think this could be a cool idea. Bellossom already takes design aspects from Hawaiian hula dancers, so I thought to myself, hey, why not double down on the concept to give it not just one Alolan form, but three of them. Alolan Blossom could have slight variations on its color and design based on three different kinds of flowers, all different variations of the hibiscus flower, which can be found in Hawaii, and give it a secondary typing based on which one it has. A yellow hibiscus can make it grass electric, a red one can make it grass fire, and a pink one can make it grass fairy. If you haven't already guessed, I took inspiration for this idea from both the different colored flowers found on the Flavebe line and the type-changing forms of Oracorio. And while I don't think it's necessary to change Blossom's abilities, I do think that, similar to Oracorio, it could have an exclusive new move called Floral Dance. It would be 90 base power, and it would hit for two types of damage, the first obviously being Grass, and the second being dependent on which form Blossom is currently in. 
electric for yellow, fire for red, or fairy for pink. You could also give it the ability to learn certain stab moves for its secondary typing via TM or level up, but I don't think it should be able to change between forms like Oricorio could because of that, just so it would be a little bit easier to keep track of what new stab moves it can learn on top of its grass moves. In order to evolve it, you'd have to have your Gloom in the Alola region, holding the hibiscus flower that corresponds to your chosen Blossom form before you use your Sunstone on it like you normally would. That'll determine which Alolan Blossom form you get, and what other type Floral Dance will do damage for, and by proxy, in just what way you'll be dancing all over your opponent's battered bodies in battle. Number 1! Nose Pass and Promo Pass! If you know anything about Hawaii, the place that the Alola region is so heavily based on, you know it's a place steeped in long-running and deeply held traditions and beliefs. One of these is the presence of Tiki, who, depending on what variation of his origin you hear, could have been the first man, or an entity that created the first human, or some such variation of this. Anyway, I thought it'd be really interesting to see a variation of Nose Pass and Probo Pass more akin to Tiki statues and idols. Given that the Nose Pass line obviously takes inspiration from the Easter Island heads, the well-known monoliths that stand on Easter Island in Eastern Polynesia. As for the Pokémon themselves, I feel like, given some of the stories you can read and hear about Tiki, such as the one where he creates a woman for himself out of the soil he placed over a pool in which he saw his own reflection, a little nose pass and probo pass could be grass and ground types. I feel like you could get away with Sturdy being one of their abilities, but the other two, Magnet Pole and Sand Forest, just aren't gonna cut it. Instead, I'm thinking we could give them a new hidden ability called Nature Shield, cutting damage from super effective moves in half while it's on grassy terrain. And I feel like a Tiki-based nose pass line could actually offer some connection to the strange souvenir item. Maybe using one in areas where you can find it doubles the odds of an encounter with a Lola nose pass. Sure, maybe it's not a super secret connection to a legendary Pokemon like we all assume the item would be, but it's better than finding out it's a nigh-worthless Taurus trinket, don't you think? So, what Pokemon do you hope will get in the Lolan form in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon? Let me know in the comments below! Give this video a like if you liked it, and subscribe for more regional countdown videos in the future! See you next time, Pokemon Trainers! Super Nerd Daniel, out!